Hey, what's going on y'all? It's Eric Texas back again with you here with the Stryker 955HP version one. Now I had a request actually come in earlier today and it was a video I put out two years ago and I have slacked on <laughs> revisiting those old videos and actually continuing on with part twos of a lot of these. However, this is one we're gonna go ahead and do. So I do appreciate uh, Digga Dave who sent me an uh, comment said, hey man, any update on this? Uh, I actually did the video between this and the uh, Anytone 666, uh, or the Quad 6 I, uh, every time. The uh, quad, Anytone Quad 6 and this CTS tone board, and if they're interchangeable, of course, yes, they are. So we're going to go ahead and revisit. How do you program in the CTS tone board? Once you install it, you upgrade to a general, do do uh, congratulate you on that. You're getting ready to go on the FM repeaters when DX comes in. Very cool, very fun. Or you go FM and you uh, you put in a digitized mode and you're just doing a uh, tone squelch uh, between two stations. You want to do a little privatation like a GRMS. Yeah, it's not private, but it gives you uh, gives you somewhat of a private channel unless they have your CTS tone board in there. You're not going to be able to do that. So easiest thing to do, first time you uh, power this unit up, and say maybe you got this with the tone board installed, make sure you do by hitting uh, that program switch. Now you'll see if you don't have it, your first option is gonna be scan. If you do have the tone board installed, it'll say R code. Well, I took it out of the old one of, the, uh, of this, put it in my Anytone. So I got a dealer pack here. This is two of them actually. It comes with a pigtail, so all I gotta do is snap off one board here. But it comes with the uh, screw for each of them, even though that the holes on these do allow for two of them and the mounting inside allows for two of them. I also appreciate extra screw for the other side. I like ruggedized radios. I don't like a board just being able to flop around inside there. But since I don't have this installed, I guess I'll go through a bonus and uh, just how to install it real quick and then uh, how to access it and program it. Well, we are back inside the Stryker 955 version one. And here is the tone board right here. See the mounting holes? I was mistaken, it's actually off center. It needs a little extra bracket, but this is somewhat tiny. We can put it on. No big deal. So we'll screw that in real quick. And it comes with this, uh, this screw right here. And um, I'm gonna actually use old school. Uh, this actually saved a ton of screws. So this is a uh, floppy drive screw. And the reason I'm using this is it has uh, just a little bit of a head on it. So we'll go ahead and get this uh, screwed in real quick. Well, I guess I should show you. We're just going to go ahead and plug it in. This is the port here. It actually has it labeled uh, up top here. There's the CT and DT DMF tone option. It actually programs out the uh, AF out, AF in, ground, COT. So we're going to go ahead and get this plugged in. Now it can only go in one way and that's the only way it can go in. You have to make sure you plug it in properly or it won't go in. And this one is red over. We'll get that plugged in. Real simple, real easy. Let's see if we can do it nice and flat. And we just screw this thing in. Like you say, it's just floating on this side. We had another bracket just to connect it that would be kind of cool but this is the old version not the new version but so yes now you have your cts tone board installed ctcss tone board and it also has the uh, digital tone in it so let me go ahead and uh, put the cover back on let's get this going of course this is my speaker where i plugged it directly in and uh, soldered it in that cord actually rattled loose a couple of times. The plastic piece came right out on it too, so I just solder it right to the board like the old school days. No need for a connection. It's just going to fall out anyway. Let's go ahead and put the covers on. Okay, now that you have the tone board installed, I'm sure you did it just fine. I am very proud of you. It's very 
Sometimes some people don't like to get into radios and do that. That's a very simple thing to do. You could do it yourself. As you can see, I did it. Can't be too terrible. So now we're going to see if we did it right. We're going to go ahead over to the program switch again. Now you'll see we have different menu selection for menu one. That's R code. Menu two, it's T code. Menu three, scan. Four is our RB. And five is TSQ. So what we're going to talk about real quick is our code. Our code usually isn't used unless the repeater offset uh, requires it. Usually they don't. Our code mostly is if you wanted to use this on anything, really, you and your buddy could set up an R code together. He set up his T code, you would your R code, and you would only decode the signal he is sending out on a subaudible frequency. And then you would have somewhat of a privatized channel that way, unless someone else is keying up with that R code that you have programmed to squelch out everything minus that whenever that magic number is hit and you can select whatever you want then that way your radio stays quiet so if you wanted to use a channel and have it uh, as long as uh, as long as it's kind of clean and clear R code so yeah that is the receive code to be able to program that you go into function and now this is just off the grid so you find a repeater somewhere you're starting to hear stuff this is how you would do it on the uh, on the road uh, or just uh, quick without using the programming but there it is CTCSS or if it does have digital you would go to DCSN so just the old school a lot of them ham radio FM repeaters are still CTCSS if they are not you do have the other option so you just go ahead and hold this down one more time the function and it brings up the code so there you go you have your program R code and selectable through the channel we're going to just leave that as is hit function again you return to the main menu second one is T code this is one normally all the repeaters need offset to open up they want this because otherwise that repeater kerchunks and they used to back in the day all the time DX rolled in. So same thing, CTCSS, if that's what you're using. And there's our frequency choices here. And you can go ahead and use that. Next function is, after that, we go through, channel button back. We have our scan and our Roger Reap as before. And, oh, excuse me, T TSQ code. But we can turn turn that on and off just by the same thing. So if you program your R code, program your T code, that's great. We're just going to go ahead and hit. Oh, goodness, yes, that's right. We're in programming. Go ahead and hit the switch. You're back. Now to operate TSQ that you programmed in, TSQ is off. We're going to go ahead and select on. Boom. Now every time you're using this, you're going to end up being in the same boat. TSQ is on, letting you know. You're programming on the CTS tones you programmed in. So if you have a buddy, turn them on to this. You can get a somewhat privatized CB radio channel. You have a fleet. You can throw them on a CTS tone on a clear channel. And, uh, but the easiest, 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 easiest way that I can tell you is use the program cable it comes with a 955 it allows you to get into the programming menu like mine i have different band set up if you go up to band 10 it's kind of ridiculous it goes up to 30 megs you're not going to transmit up there radio is probably not tuned for that so i always take band 10 band 9 and then you got 40 or 80 programmable channels put all your cts tones your offsets repeater transmit uh, re receive if it's digital all those in there and then all you have to do is run them through and then you can just keep it on that band and scan that band and then you end up with uh, you know 40 of your favorite uh, channels ham CB radio so this is uh, very good to use very cool you can set this up to be uh, very powerful like mine I have I have uh, 
Where is it? Somewhere in here. Band. Band 6. Uh, there it is. UK 40 FM. So I already have these programmed in. You know, you can do whatever you want with these kind of radios. It's up to you. And uh, yeah, the offset, you can change everything and get this uh, perfected to you. But yeah, that was the easiest way to get CTS tone. Use your cables. Don't use, you can't use one of these type cables. Yes, it does look like that end on that. It, it doesn't work. Any tone, quad six will work. You have a CRT 6900. It does have a headphone jack on it that you can use because uh, that goes to a pigtail normally into their radios. It does have the same end, so you could use that. Uh, you just have to... Uh, th that way you could actually use this type of cable if you're looking for an end. But yeah, you still need this. It's more serial based than USB based. But this is the easiest way for me to show you that yes, you can use your CTS tone very simply, very easily on a lot of different modes. And uh, real easily, there's our TSQ off. We'll go ahead and turn that on. And then we got our program tone squelch but use the software find a band you don't use program all your stuff in one all your 10 meter repeaters all your ham frequencies that you would use or your free band or however you use this radio very simple very easy very beautiful anyway i'll see you in the next video I do appreciate each and every one of you and sorry it took so long to get back to you but thank you dig a day for getting me uh back on track on this one here and uh, finishing up so yeah that's how you use CTS Tone. If you, if you want to go ahead and do that on the road, good power to you. I always love to just program a band up. Easiest, easiest way ever. All right, 73.